everybody, this is Chris here, and it's, it's, it's a rainy day. Today is September 12th, 2015, and before I'm going to show you my unboxing video, I'm going to start before I'm going to show you my stuff that I got, that I got on, off of eBay today, I'm just going to give you a couple of announcements here to say about this. I did the first two 4 o'clock game as we salute Force Fridays, and when they start the Force Friday, because... Um, I started uh, playing Star Wars games in, in uh, honor of the brand new, the new Star Wars movie that, that is supposed to be coming out later this year. And it's going to be called Star Wars: The Force Awakens. And of course, in honor of that, so to celebrate the, what, what the upcoming movie is going to be, I did a four o'clock game saluting on Star Wars. It's what we call Force Fridays. Because a lot of stores are just having Force Fridays, and that's where they started doing those old things. All star, everything Star Wars. Yep. Uh, I actually originally I was going to do Star Wars Weekend, so I just changed it and renamed it as Force Friday. So this is what we're going to be doing this for the four o'clock game for the remainder of every Friday. I will be doing Star Wars games in honor of the, the upcoming Star Wars film, The Force Awakens is actually the first uh, Star Wars movie since the Revenge of the Sith. And this is actually uh, episode seven, or what they called episode seven, that's gonna be called. And uh, this is gonna be a very interesting movie. I definitely wanna go see it. And as you probably know, uh, last week was my birthday. You know, I'm 37 years old, and I hope you have, have a very happy belated birthday. So um, I'm glad that last weekend was my birthday. So. Uh, I hope everyone out there wish me a very happy belated birthday, and I hope everybody enjoys as well. And of course, there's a, a couple of other things I have to say about it. Um, some of the other things I, I have I've been discussed today, and this is what I'm involving other things for the future stuff that we will do. Uh, we'll have more on that on our way. So this is a very interesting stuff. So hold on a second. And yeah, that was that was the staff. I'm not going to know his name, so I apologize for, for what I say. And uh, fortunately, I just actually make a note of it, so I have decided what I'm going to be doing today. And uh, I will be continuing to do my four o'clock game on Star Wars. We'll have to play more Star Wars games until uh, the new movie comes out. And um, just to show you an update, and just one more thing, I'm gonna, before I'm going to begin, I'm going to show you the. A, a, uh, something that I have not seen in this update video. I recently got it the last time, about two weeks ago or three weeks ago when I got this. This is the Super 8 millimeter version print of the Ugly Duckling. And uh, here it is. I recently got this off eBay and this is the Super 8 version of the Ugly Duckling. It was originally a, it was originally released in 1939 and it was also the last um, Disney cartoon under the Silly Symphony's name. Here's the front. This is, here's the spine. It says Walt Disney Home Movies. The other spine. The top. Here's the top and here's the bottom. It has a label ripped off. And here's the back. It says Hans Christian Andersen's most beloved fable has brought life in Walt Disney's Oscar winning Oscar winning production of the story of the unwanted and unloved duckling and here's the film itself yeah since my bulb just died i'll have to see if i can get another bulb one day since until when i was and yeah this version as you can see uh, i checked the film strip though yep it used the exactly the opening and closing titles These, this was a reissue but it's not even saying silly symphonies has no mention of the name silly symphonies on the on the opening and closing titles this was a re it was actually it's a later reissued release. It, it says it starts off with a Walt Disney production instead of a Walt Disney Silly Symphony, and um, and then it ended with a Walt Disney production at the end, and that was with the sunbeam background. I apologize for the classical music. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I just want to tell you all about that, and um, and there you go. It says Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Cartoons. And this is a Super 8 color. Um, since my bulb just died, I'll see if I can order another light bulb. Um, 
I, a month ago when I recently ordered it, it was working fine on the Kodak Instamatic, but then uh, the next night it blew. Yeah, the lamp just blew. And that'll be it. I, I was going to take a little break right now. So, so I, I, I want to go back to the standard 8mm thing so I can watch it. All right, that's enough for that. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, we're going to start off with, this is another unboxing video. And speaking of which, we're going to do this right now. And this is what I got as a birthday present myself. Here it is. This is actually, it's very big. Look at this. The package looks big. Look. Yep, it's big on the box. So, without further ado, let's see if this, this thing opens up and see what's going on. Okay? If it's, uh, if it's like it's a big, it's like a trunk or something, well, brace yourself, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start things up. We're going to unopen it. We're going to open up this box and see what happens. Are you ready? Let's get things started. Drum roll, please. All right, the moment you're all the way for. Ugh. Okay, this is it, folks. We're gonna open this up. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, look at this. It's taking me five, uh, 30 seconds. Okay. Enough with the drum roll. Oh, now the drum roll is over. Uh, okay, this is it, folks. This is it, folks. The moment has finally arrived. Look at this. It's just boxes, paper. Oh, look at this. Lots of cardboard paper. Look at this. Everything is just cardboard. Oh, dear. Look at this. Look at that. It's all a mess. Uh, oh, man, it's heavy. Oh, this is, this is it, folks. It's heavier than it was before. Oh. Okay. All right. I noticed this is a, another. I don't. I don't know. This. It, it's not a stereo receiver. I know it's like the size of a stereo. I know this packaging looks like it's a stereo. No, it was not a stereo. It's not a, a television. It's not a, t, a 13 inch TV. I'm not sure what it is. This is what it's supposed to be. Okay. Enough said. I want another drum roll, okay, ladies and gentlemen? This is another drum roll. I gotta tell you, this is it. Here it is. Let's try this one more time. Okay. All right. Let's see this opens up. Okay. Oh. Heck, look at this. It's all tape. Look at this, it's all tape. Can't wait to see it opens up. Uh, okay, it's open up. It's finally arrived. Now the drum roll's ended. Okay. Oh, oh man, look at that. It's so heavy. Look at this. Is, look at this, all covered with tape. Ooh. And now, prepare yourself. What we gonna do? Is we gonna show you something? Oh, here it is gonna show you something. Look at this. That paper looks like it's an office building or whatever. Oh, man. Ah. It's too much. Look at that. Look at all paper. Ugh. Is so heavy. Look at that. 
Oh. Listen, I apologize for the video here, folks. This is taking me a long while to open. It's it's right here. Look at this. It's it's finally open. Oh. It is. Oh. I can't believe this. Wow. This is, oh my gosh. This is heavy. Oh. Uh, oh. This gives me a heart attack here. Oh. Okay, folks. This is. This, this is. All right. And now, we're going to start doing this. Open. Open. And now, okay, folks, this is it. This is it. Oh, now, look, guess what? It's finally open. Oh, it's almost there. Here it is. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for has finally arrived. Ugh. It's here! It, it's almost here! Look at this! Oh! Oh now, it's almost open. It's almost there! It's almost there! Oh! Now it's, yeah, look at this. It's wrapping up. Oh! Oh my gosh! See, folks, it's open. It's open. Oh. And now, folks, and prepare yourself. Here it is. Here she is. Yep, there she is, folks. You're looking at a Bell and Howell Thermal Sound Movie Projector. Yeah, I gotta tell you, this is a 16 millimeter movie projector. Opens up there and... Yep, it is, it is right here. Open up here, and that's that will shock you a little bit. And now, let's open the wrapping piece, piece of plastic wrap all of this. Look at that! <laughs> it took me ten full minutes to find this thing. Look at this! It took me ten minutes for unboxing the video, my projector. There it is, folks. Man, this looks amazing. Wow, this is an excellent movie projector, as you can tell by this the artwork. As you can tell by this box, let me tell you, it's a full box here. This is so nice. Now we have finally completed all my movie projectors. Here's what we have here. We had, uh, I have a set of three projectors. First up, I recently have a Kodak Show, Super Showtime 8, the Kodak Instamatic M110, and the August 500 slide projector. And, fine, and now I finally got this as part of the, now I finally have this one and as part of my projector family. This is a 16 millimeter movie projector. And you can see here's the here's the front of it. Uh, let's uh, let's pop. Let's see if I can uh, in the video here for a moment here. But just just to remind you folks, uh, it took me yeah, it took me five. How long did it took me? Twelve, ten minutes to open. Okay, folks, this is very sleepy. Look at this. Okay, this is a Bell and Howell film. It says Filmo Sound. 16 millimeter projector 
specialist. This is a specialist model, and you can tell I have not seen any projector like this before. And you can see here the front of it. It looks heavy. Look at this. This is, this is big as a tank. Here's the here's the side. It has the grill on the front on the spine, and here's your uh, the the plug that you can plug it into your speaker or an amplifier, or possibly you can use it as a headphone jack. Here's the back of it, and and here's the front. Here's the other side with the speakers on it. And you can use it for um, to hold this thing up on the upper position. Okay, hold on just a second. And with that, these are this is the uh, the actual that's the actual face of the this is your this is the excellent look of the Bell and Howell projector. First, you got to do is open up. See how this thing opens up and. Look at this. It even has. Look at this. It has all all the stuff are in there. Oh yeah, yeah it is kind of neat. Yep, it's got the bulb. It's still good. It's kind of dirty if you have seen it. Okay, the unit is looks pretty dirty, so it needs some little bit of cleaning here. Yeah, yeah. Close first. You gotta stuff this thing back where it is. This is an interesting projector, and if you can tell, um, here's the, uh, and yes, you can see here's the top cover that it has a set of instructions on there to how to load your projector. Uh, here's the, um, this is, uh, yep, it has the setup, and here's your, uh, here's how you could feed the film in. Yeah, there was, there's automatic threading, it says turn sitter switch. Yep, it's got a set of instructions in there. It says uh, automatic threading. Move lever to auto low position. Insert film threading. To and of course, here's how you can run. Adjust focus and the whole thing. And then to rewind, you have to rewind the film. And here's some for unthreading steps. And then here's the... Yeah, it's got a lot of detail. It says the quick reference guide, Bell and Hall Specialist Auto Load Film of Sound. Threads film automatically, just follow the numbers. And here's that little base right there. It's a foam pad. It's over here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you here are the basic controls for the specialist. Alright, just to, to give you a little thing out there. There you go. Um, here is the here is the actual controls for this projector. Here you got your uh, here, here's the one for still and run. There's your still run switch, so you, the projector will run on there. There's your off forward lamp. These are the second switches for off forward lamp and reverse and lamp. And here's your here's the off position. Here's the still, and here's your and here's the the stuff for the volume and to, and here's your tone control, volume control and tone controls. If you yeah, it has an on and off switch, so you can turn off your projector or you can turn it on. And here's your volume, and it has a built-in amplifier, and you can see it has an uh, has that IBM sticker. It looks like it's uh, it's came out of IBM. And it's actually it's made by Chromars, 922 Bangkok Street in Denver, for those who wanted the best. Yeah, but, yeah, this needs to come off. Um, yeah, it doesn't take long. To see. Yeah, this this peel this will take them right off of it. And then of course it's got the the exciter lamp that has a, a, a thing for the exciter lamp. We'll have to do more on that a little bit later. Is where you can um, this this ha also has an exciter lamp. Is where you can, and here's the uh, the knob is where you can open your lamp. 
and yep, you can see here. This has it says here to rem. Um, it's still too bright to remove gum tape. It says one remove gum tape. Insert film two and two inches. Register with pin and press film cutter. The film cutter is uh it's right over here. This is like one of those things you can tell this is the yeah it's all dust. It looks fine, but then and here's that light for the ex for the uh, the exciter lamp for the for the film soundtrack. That's where and you can see here's the the exciter lamp is where the film soundtrack goes into and uh, here's what you have a sprocket it has a sprocket it's where you can put the film in there and it goes right over here you can see you could, if you if you want to thread the film you have to insert the the load right there if you can it goes you have the film goes right over here then it goes right into the well, yeah, it goes right into the um, the guide. And yep, there's oh look at this, how big this looks. And yep, it goes into the film path of that. It, it goes. If you want to thread the film here, you can do is put it in. You have to set. If you could do it manually, all you gotta do is take this thing up there. You have to use pull this thing up. Then, then put it right where it is. That this is the. See if you can do this thing manually. The cutter, the cutter, the system restorer. That's where you can see, prevent from damaging the film. And then, of course, the, it goes. Here it is. It, the film goes into the um, the sprocket. Then goes into the to the uh, the film gates and the aperture. Here's and here's the, the and then another one. It goes right into the sound drum. And you can see here's the here's the sound drum to go in there. It's a little dusty. And here's the um, the guide rollers into the sprockets. And then of course it goes right into the film. And then and then it goes right into the take up reel. Look at this. And you can tell it has. Yep, it's got the the here's the thing for the forward. And if and um, here's the, the, the exciter lamp is actually looks pretty good if it looks fine for me. Uh, this needs some, a little bit of cleaning here, tender loving care. Yeah, it says BAK exciter lamp. It looks pr pretty fine. It looks fine, but it has a, another one of these exciter lamps is you have to replace the lamp. And here's an extra one for the exciter lamp is where you can replace it with. I don't have to worry about it. I have an extra one here. It says to remove door, depress spring, and lift door up. That's a, uh, yeah, it looks a little heavier. And, and it says auto load is right over here. So all you gotta do is, uh, I'm gonna, all you gotta do is put it back where it goes. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, it looks a little dusty, so it needs a little bit of cleaning here. Yeah, it's, it's got a little bit dirt. Uh, residue or something. No, here's the the exciter lamp. It's where it goes into the soundtrack. It's where it indicates the film soundtrack could go over there. This could be used for both silent and sound. And here's the thing. Here's the suppl the supply reels where you can put your film in the supply reel. And this is the one for the take up reel. And uh, enough said. Um, Here's the, um, the the press. Yep, you have to do is press the, the little thing number two. I don't know. I don't know how to do this because I don't know what, what I use for the press. Yep, there's the button. Is where you can press the the thing. Yeah, I don't know what what they'll do. It it says on the top. To rewind, raise reel arm to vertical position. Attach film to the front reel. Set motor switch to reverse and press rewind button. There's your framer right there. And here's the button that you can press the rewind. This is for the rewind. When If you want to rewind it, all you got to do is uh, lift the arm straight up. 
Yep, and here's the switch for the silent sound. Change speed only when the projector is running. There's your sound, and there's your silent. It says attach film to front reel. Yep, you have to use press the button to to raise up the 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 supply reel, the end of film reel when the when the movie was done. You have to do is raise your arm, and then you can do a rewind. You have to do is do a reverse and then rewind. Yeah, you got to hit the rewind button. It's where you can press it here. And this is interesting feature. It's very nice to see a a new a Bell and Howell. Thomo Sound Specialist projector and the model number if I can tell you it's model 552 yeah this needs a, like I said it's a little bit of cleaning here and uh, here's what it says auto load position number three yep it's got the auto position number it has number three on there and there's yeah it gives you number four yeah these will look like the numbers using for those old things and you can tell Yep, the speaker grills on the front. The amplifiers on the other side. Uh, I, I know it's very heavy. And this stuff is heavy. And you can tell the back of this unit is looks like a little dusty here. It says fragile. Accepted for transportation to passengers. Uh, yeah, there's a label. And yeah, there's an old TWA logo. That's kind of stupid. That's kind of nice, but you can see these vintage original stickers on them. And there you go. Once you can do is plug this in and see if you can do is plug it onto your outlet of the, uh, the projector. And let's see if this thing runs. You have to turn this on, and yep, it's got the, the volume. It's got the... speaker would come up yeah I don't know if this this is the speaker grill I know it's it's uh it's pretty nice but I don't know how to you turn it on your speakers so I don't have sound project film on there so let's see how this thing goes yep it works I don't know how to do this. Yep, it actually runs on the screen. I don't know what to do with this thing. It's, this thing does not function. It works pretty good, but it needs a little belt. Yeah, it needs to run. All right, I... Yeah, I don't know what... I don't know what it is, but... I know, this is what it looks like. Yeah, it does not turn. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, it actually does not run. Ladies and gentlemen, it's got some problems. The reels don't move. Um, yeah, the reel does not move. It, you can tell the um, while the projector is running, I know it does not have any thing to feed the film I, I gotta tell you something let's see if I let's see if this is the inside of this unit I'm gonna take this apart right now and see what this thing looks okay 
now this thing I, I took this apart right now um, I had a problem with running the, after I, I, I tried this machine on it does not work I looked at the inside of this here all you gotta do is you have to unscrew all all of these in order to check the, what the problem is and you can tell this unit has um it's got the original tubes it looks pretty good I think yep all the capacitors and all of this stuff it looks kind of dirty yep the, the tubes are look 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 how dirty it is it's uh it has the the rectifier capacitor there's your look how dusty it is this needs a little bit of cleaning and you can tell this one it look, doesn't look like this and you can see there's the roller right there and if you, as you can tell this this has the the worm gear look how look how gooey it is this is yeah a lot of these film filmo sound projectors had a lot of problems but this is this is discounted a problem this got to be the problem uh, all you gotta do look at how bad this is it's all gummed up yeah and this needs a little cleaning and yep and look at how bad this looks it's so gooey as you can see here yeah yeah this is like you're getting stuck on the, the film now I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do right now I have to do some repairing because I'm gonna see if I can fix up all the uh, unit here this has an amplifier and then you can see the amplifier is working fine but look how bad look how dusty it looks how bad look at this and here's the um, this one is it's got all the parts are in here but anyways yeah now I'll see if I can decide to do some full restoration I know there's a video on how to clean or anything like this it needs to be cleaned so I just want to tell you uh, that means we're not going to run any of the movies in here until when I get it restored. This is the first time I have not done this before. Because this is the first time I have not tried to do it. Because um, I am, I'm working on fixing this unit because what happened is the it's got a lot of issues here for the for this. The the belt looks really, really fine, but... Uh, if you have to, as you can see the belt looks fine the motor runs works pretty well and of course I'm, I'm gonna do some repairing so I'm gonna prepare what I'm gonna be doing right now I'm going to fix this thing so um, we're not gonna do it we're not gonna we're not gonna do this until when I'm gonna get restored so anyways we're let's see what I'm, I'm gonna work on it I'm gonna give it a break right now and we'll come back after this. We'll have to fix this unit. So we're going to get this thing 100% working. So anyways, here you go. All right. After t I took about several hours of when I did this video, I'm recording this on the uh, Sunday of September the 13th of this year. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a little update here. I cleaned all the excess unit you can do is here's what I did I did use a bunch of q-tips in here I cleaned out all the all the grease that it's been stuck when I first got it yeah it's got because of the problem was uh, the uh, the worm gear and the gears uh, does not move but which is the, um, the sprocket movement it does not move very well because it's kind of frozen when I, when I first bought it and I did clean out all the stuff after a couple of testings, I did turn it on. It, it works great. So here's what it looks like. I got rid of. Look at this. You can tell. The look at that. It's all the gunk that I got cleaned. This is where I did remove all all the original grease is kind of removed from the from this unit. And you can tell. Yeah, that one was bad. So I did clean it up. And you can see the rest of it looks pretty nice, but I cleaned out, I, I, I got rid of, removed all the dust from the, the inside of the unit, the motor, I cleaned the motor, and of course there's your, uh, you can see what's on the other side of this unit, it has an amplifier, it has five tubes, it has a 12AX7A, and of course a, a couple of 25C5s, yep, these are, uh, all the original tubes are still good. 
when I turned it on, it looks has all the original tubes look pretty good. It has all the capacitors. See, it's got all the original caps, all the resistors, and all the things. And there's your chassis unit, and um, very new. It looks pretty good. And um, here's your speaker unit, for the inputs. And yeah, but when I tried this, uh, my headphone jack it doesn't look, it does not fit very well. And of course, there's the uh, interlock switch. Uh, this is where you can take it apart with your screwdriver. And what happens is when you, when you take it apart. You have to, when you plugged it in, nothing. It does not power it on. To, this would prevent from um, from getting electrocuted or getting shocked. But that's very hazardous if you have to be very careful. You cannot turn it. You cannot fix it while it's running. Otherwise, you'll get you get completely dangerous, and it's very shock. But this would prevent from getting dangerous from uh, all the hazards they had for the the unit. So. You have to be very careful for that. I know a lot of Bell, all Bell and Howell models have the interlock switch that screws so you can take this thing apart. I tried to plug it in and when I turn it on, nothing. It doesn't, yeah, because you can't do this while it's, while it's in, while taking apart. This is actually a good thing to use this thing, but anyways, um, all, everything is all cleaned and it's ready to run. So I'm going to give you a couple of testings here and uh, see what's going on. Now let's see, let's put it back together and see what happens. Now the projector is finally put it back into one piece. So let's see how this thing works. Yep, as you can see it works like this. Yep. You, you, you see, this is for the take-up reel. It looks, it, it turns. This is where it turns on. Yep, it, it spins. And, uh, let's turn this off and then the reverse. Yep, it works like that. And then, same goes to the lamp. Is uh, here's you go to the silent, and here's the sound. Change only when the injection is running. Yep, there's the, and here's your lamp. And when you turn the sound on, you can turn on the volume because. Turn it on, and then you can turn on your lamp. And you can see it starts. The, the indicator lamp is starting to, to come on. And uh, here's the uh, comes up any minute now. Yep, it turns on and looks pretty nice. Let me turn this uh, light off and see what it does. I'm gonna focus here. Yep, and the, the tubes are warmed up. You can see here the tubes are very warmed up. And uh, here's what you can do forward buttons. Yeah, it, this will prevent from um, breaking the film when it lands on the still lamp. And so all you gotta do is when you open this up. Oh yeah, a little too bright. And then the lamp is, yep, it's got the light the original lamp is actually turned on. So, yeah, it's a little too bright. Then you can just turn your thing off. And if it's laying on the still mode, there's a... Ah! Ow! It burned up. Oh. Yeah, that's what they did. I know. It's a little burned. That's 
okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's all the burn marks on there, but yeah, anyways, it was, we're, we're so, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm really okay now. And uh, this is uh, there you go. Yeah, I know it's all burn marks on the the projector. If you can see, it's on the side. You got to be very careful. If you if you can't do this on while it's running because it will cause burns. Yeah, this is kind of a dangerous situation if you if you gotta be very careful when you run the projector or when you when the lamp is on. It's very extremely hot. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is violent hot. So you you gotta be very careful. It's yeah. This lamp is probably uh, what you can do, but that is just the problem with uh, when you run the projector. So. Um, I don't have any uh, uh, take-up reels as of right now. I ordered the take-up reels last time when I ordered it along with this projector. Um, I'm going to show you a little demonstration video before I'm going to end this, before I fade to black. This is Jack and the Beanstalk. This is a 60 millimeter silent version. They're all silent, but it's not, it doesn't have any sound. You can see. Yeah, this is a 7 inch reel instead of a 5 inch reel. I already had this on 8 millimeter. Which I showed you, the front, the spine, the spine, the top, the bottom, here's the back. And this is the version 1 copy of Jack and the Beanstalk. It was originally a comic color short from 1933, and this, this is a Castle Films version from the 40s. Here's the film itself. And you can tell, you, you look at the opening, if, yep, this, this film does not have any leader. It does no, there's no countdown or anything. It goes starts right at the Castle Films logo, where it says Castle Films Presents on there. There you go. Um, this is actually this is a version one copy, but I also have the version two on eight millimeter, and that I already showed you on my other channel. So um, I'm going to show you a little demonstration video of this. So unfortunately, I don't have a reel to go there. I hope in a couple of weeks or maybe a week or two, if I get a, an empty reel or something I will give you a little demonstration so I'm gonna fade to black right now and we'll come back and we'll give you a demonstration of my Bell & Howell specialist Filmo sound projector model 552 well in addition to this projector when I recently got off of eBay I got this this 16 inch reel I'm gonna show you right now here it is. This is a take-up reel. You can see here there's actually some... Yeah, these are tape residue is in there, but... Yep, it's this one is metal. It's 16 inches wide. And yeah, but that is the the most important thing you can tell. It's a 16-inch um, reel. You can see there is, there's a... It could run... Um, yeah, you can see how many the length of film is. Let's see how much length is. It's six. 16,000 feet and uh, this runs about probably about 45 or an hour and yet 45 minutes and this is a film this is actually an a take-up reel so all you gotta do is put this in the slot right here so as you can see it's right over here there you go that's the that's the reels so um in addition to that, I also got another 16 millimeter copy of another comic color of iWorks cartoon. This is Simple Simon. I already had this on 8 millimeter, which I think it's this is this is what does the job done. Yeah, I, mean, I think I already had this on 8 millimeter. I'm gonna. This is actually this is a 16 millimeter. It was says complete edition. Here it is. So with that uh, enough said. Let's uh, let's put this camera up here and see what it does. And yep, the box. Uh, you see the flaps look broke off. Yeah, need some taping. So um, here's the. I'm not gonna show you the front. I already discussed the first, the front, the spine, the other spine. There's the top. It's kind of ripped off. It needs to need some taping. The bottom, and there here's the back. Yep, same thing. And here's the film itself. Looks pretty nice. So all you gotta do before we set it up the 
the threat before threading the film, all you got to do is here's what you can do. Take it here's you take the supply reel going right over here. Yeah, there's no liter film on this thing. I have to see if I can get some 60 millimeter liter film to go into this position. So there you go. Um, this was put into place. So now um, there's some issue. When I first actually got this, when I first tested this thing, it had a problem with the auto load thing. So yeah, it would cause the film to be jammed. So um, enough said. Uh, let's uh, let me show you how you can do and. And uh, we're going to pause, stop right now. And we'll come back. We're going to set up all the, we'll have to thread a little further. And and then after this, we're going to give you a little demonstration. So stand by. Now the film has already been thread. It's time for you to show you. Here it is. This is going to be the first time. For the first time, I'm going to show you my demonstration of my Bell & Howell Specialist movie projector showing Simple Simon. You know, the silent, I, I left it on the silent switch is ready. So let's, all you gotta do is turn on the forward switch. And here we go. All you do is left the run button. You have to. All right. Let's turn on the forward switch. Turn this thing on running and here we go wow yep it, it, it causes the real problem hold on a second okay let's start this thing and see if this thing runs Yeah, see, screen's having some problems here. So let's see. Let's ha let's see if I can fix the job and see what it does. All right. Um, here's what you can do. Um, it took me about 20 minutes to see how the problem is, how to fix this thing. So here's what you do. If you if you hit the auto load thing, you'll have to start the film. And then guess what happened? I know I made a loop. I looped around all the stuff. Then I open the lens then the film travels all the way to the sound drum to the whole the uh, thing that goes right over there and then film travel it goes right over here see I checked and correct the problem and yeah uh, I actually I'm using right now the simple Simon short so uh, let's see if I can turn off the lamp and see what it works overall it works fine but of course the problem yeah I tried so many attempts at jittering because the film jitters. So I had to do is fix this thing and re-thread it and try it again. So here it is, folks. Once again, let's roll this film and see what it does. What you gotta do is... All you do is use the frame to see what it does. This is... Uh, just the focus and there you go now you're watching a cartoon this stuff is pretty silent I guess there's no sound or anything if you turn on this what happens if you turn on the sound it still does the same and here's the volume control you turn on Yeah, all you can hear is just a buzzy noise. Yeah, I like to turn on the sound on and see what it does. Uh, if you want to turn, turn off the... Yeah, it does the same too. Yeah, it goes much faster than any other before. Uh, let's turn on the... Yep, there's your exciter, exciter lamp is still on, but here's what you can do. If you turn on the volume, the sound comes out of the speakers. This would not play on any sound 
this sound, yep, you hear that, uh, that little fart noise. See? It's like fart noise. And when you stop, and, okay, and there you go. And here's an interesting thing. If you want to play it backwards, all you got to do is put it on forward, switch to off, just with what you hit in still, go into reverse, and run. Oh, that's a, that's, um, yeah, you can tell. Uh, Sorry, I just apologize for this. Yep, it's jittering. Sorry, I, I apologize for the jittering. You know, the, the yeah, if you hit on reverse, it, it, it the film starts to jitter. So as of right now, we go to the forward mode. Um, all you gotta do is hit this thing. And there you go. It goes back to the the norm it, it goes back to the mode and uh, we're gonna watch the and uh, here's what happens oh there there it is that's uh yeah there's that noise right there yeah you gotta turn this off on the sound mode i always prefer the sound version the sound is uh, actually it's quite faster than the 8mm one, like it's 14 frames per second. And then 24 frames per second is actually, it sounds like it was from a, um, compared to the DVD or VHS or 35mm movies, all run on the same speed. And it goes right at the end of the cartoon. Oh, we're at the end of the very end of the short right there. Sorry, folks. Um, this is... Yep. Yeah, it is kind of jittering, but it has all kinds of problems. And yep, we made it to the end of the reel. That's right. Uh, I know all these models are having problems with the jamming. Yeah. And that was kind of hear that brrrr, and it starts to jitter. It causes the film to jitter. So uh, there you go. I just want to check the film strip and see what it does. Well, it looks fine from the start. Well, yeah, it, it, yeah, the film starts to get jittered here because that's the the only place you can do. Okay, uh, sorry folks, I I just want to tell you all about that anyways. So let's stop this film and see what it does. To rewind this film, all you got to do is lift it up as quite as I can. Here you go. There's your... Um, this is for the rewind, and um, it will go right into the, um, this is, um, you have to use the empty reel, you have to do is place it onto the empty reel, of course, Let's see what I can do, find all the thickness, this is live video, folks, this is uh, what I'm using it right now, there you go. And then, and then you have to go on, just hit on still, go on the reverse, and let it rewind. And you have to hit the button. Is See, you have to have hit the button to rewind all the way. 
Yeah, it's kind of a slow pace here because... Yep, it is taking long enough to do so. Now your re now your film has been rewound. Pull this lever down there. Take the reels out, and we'll and it'll and it'll put it away and put it in for the next showing. Sounds pretty interesting, isn't it? All right, and now we're going to the next one. Well. Uh, today is actually September 21st. I'm, I'm trying to update this one because uh, before I go any further, uh, I received two 60 millimeter co copies of these cartoons that I got in the mail this past weekend. First, this is Mary's Little Lamb. I already had this on 8 millimeter. I have two copies I have on 8 millimeter. One is the black and white, the other one is, is color. And you see, same, yep. And you can tell the film itself looks pretty nice. I, I, I ran a few times on the projector. It looks okay, but it's kind of good. It, the picture was slightly better than, than the one on 8mm, which was too blurry. So it, uh, that was another copy of Blair Mary's Little Lamb. And in addition, I got my first 16mm copy of what we know as the my first Bugs Bunny cartoon I own on 16 millimeter. This is a reel. As you can see here, it uses a Kodak reel. And you can see on the side here on the film, it says the heckling hair. And this got to be one of the worst Bugs Bunny cartoons in, 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 uh, in animated history. And this was one of the last Bugs Bunny cartoons that was made by Tex Avery. Uh, Tex Avery did a few of these shorts in the 30s. And then um, this was one of the, the problem they did. Um, this has got to be one of the weakest of the cartoons. Um, this was, came out in 1941, and this was Bugs Bunny's fourth animated cartoon short. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk about the ending where we get to it. So first, I'm going to thread this movie up, and uh, we're going to start it up here from here. So stick with me, folks, and we'll come right back. All right. Now the film has already been threaded. It's ready to run. All you got to do is hit the... Um, the silent switch is uh, it's right up next to the bottom. So I'm going to do a little bit of a trick for you guys. Um, we're going to... Now the, the amplifier is set to volume. And of course, here's what you can do. If it's ready to start, let's fire this up and see what it goes. All right, we're going to start this thing up. All right, sorry, we have to apologize for the problem. Okay, here we go. Let's find this up and see what it is. Yep, it's finally running. As you can tell, look at the speaker quality on this thing. Wow, speaker works very good. 
Wow. And here's your tone control. Here's on the low. And here's set on the high. Wow, this thing is loud. You gotta love this, folks. This is pure cartoon fun. Here's what you could do. You see something weird? Here's where you hit the silent mode. Wow, this is weird, isn't it? Wow. This is how slow it is. That's kind of slow if you run on silent mode. Look at this. Wow, look how slow this thing is. Well, I'll be seeing you. Wow. Good luck, Doc. Wow, this is interesting. This is very interesting. You can, as you can see, this is very nice. So I'm gonna let this thing run for the rest of the cartoon. And here's here's a good idea. When you put on the reverse mode, this is how weird this looks. If you wanna, if you play it backwards, this, look at this. Wow. You gotta tell you about this. This is kind of an experimental effect, so you, you can make some weird effects. Yeah, well, you can see it. Sometimes you could throw a little subliminal message about hell or something with a demon. I don't know what is going on here because um, if you play it right, this is, this is kind of weird. That's strange. I don't want Warner Brothers to get blocked on YouTube due to copyright issues, so I'm not going to play it backwards. That is a... Uh... <laughs> I don't know why they call it a the message. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I would like to hear that Mary Melody's theme music played backwards. <laughs> That's, that was so funny. Okay, we're gonna run the rest of this cartoon after this. Right after this one, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna show you what the ending is kind of stupid because let me tell you something. I don't. The, the best thing about this is the worst part of this cartoon is the ending. I'm gonna throw it in to show you what this thing looks like, which has one of the worst climatic moments in in animated history, where Bugs was falling two miles down from the cliff. Um, I'm gonna talk about this after we're gonna watch this. So stand by. Okay, be warned. Here's this is what I don't like. Here's the. the uh, Here's the moment, this has got to be one of the most cliche moments in cartoon history, is the long fall. Yeah, I did not like the ending, because this is why the ending kind of sucks. 
Prepare yourself, just be warned. I know, this has got to be any second now, and this is what I'm going to talk about this. This is why this ending kind of sucks. Prepare for the worst, folks. Yeah, you, as you can tell, they later use this for in the, a falling hair. Wow, <laughs> this is even worse. I can't believe this. This is not very good. And this is what happens at the, at the end of this cartoon. This is definitely what happens when they cut it off at the very end. This is what happens. I really don't like the ending at all. Just be prepared yourself. And here it is. Wow. As you can tell, the ending sucks. Wow. There you go. That was the heckling hair. So I do not want the YouTube to get into copyright issues. So um, as you probably know, um, the sound quality looks decent, but of course, yeah, it's okay. But the cartoon, this got to be, as I said, one of my, my least favorite Bugs Bunny cartoon of all time. I think my favorite is uh, Buckaroo Bugs which is kind of nice, but look at this. You can tell that uh, there is no in the film reels at the, at the end though, because too bad they did not actually show the, the tail end of the reel. And um, as you can tell, this is kind of sucks. So here's what you can do, same, do the same procedure, just rewind the, the whole thing and uh, let it run. So um, I'm gonna show you what I got. To tell you something this is what I'm gonna do same thing as it did before and no, it does not work right All right I just hit the button twice and so that the, the film will rewind okay now I'm gonna talk about the original ending this is according to Wikipedia this is a cartoon that led to Avery leaving Warner Brothers and moving to MGM. The final gag of this cartoon originally had Bugs and Willoughby falling off three cliffs, with Bugs telling the audience after the second fumble, Hold on to your hats, folks! Here we go again! During the third trip down. Schlesinger is ended for reasons that are not known, certainly, for most popular stories, that the hold on to your hats line was referring to as a risque joke. Um, that was in the, in, then in circulation. Another story that Schlesinger feared that Tech Avery had killed off Bugs Bunny by ending the cartoon, with Bugs and Willoughby falling off the second clip without a clear indication of whether or not the two survived. According to Martha Siegel, Schlesinger found the second fall to be repetitious and subjected to his inclusion to those grounds. He instructed Avery to cut it, but Avery insisted that he should remain. Leon uh, simply overruled him as boss. Carl F. Cohen suggested that Schlesinger found inappropriate an ending which suggested that Bugs getting killed. From Schlesinger's point of view, the dispute was over, his right to do as he pleased with the film that he was paying for. From Avery's point of view, the dispute was over, artistic interference. The film was edited so that the characters only fall off the cliff once. After Bugs and Willoughby fall through the sky in a lengthy sequence, they put they put on the brakes and make a soft field free landing to the ground. Bugs says to the audience, Yeah, as you can see here, it says, uh, nah, fooled you, didn't we? That's what it shows here at the at the end of that sixteen millimeter print of this. The dog follows, yeah, as went after they towards the fade out, as the cartoon fades out. Willoughby's line in the fade out to the end title are usually cut in T V versions, most be shown on uh, TBS, TNT, Cartoon Network, Boomerang, or some other internet, or could be on DVD releases of, the, of that, to cover up the fact that the cartoon has been edited in such an abrupt manner prior to release the theatrically. Yeah, that's right, they uh, they just tried to end it off because they, they brought to an abrupt end when they, yeah, they just, right before theatrically released it. Because um, Avery was mad 
and walked out of the studio. Yeah, he, he was let go from the studio at the time before going to Warner Brothers. No, no, not Warner Brothers. That's after he left Warner and went over to MGM. That's right. He was promptly suspended for four weeks without pay. In 19, around April of 41, the quarrel was reported by an article at The Hollywood Reporter. But during this, his suspension, Avery was hired by MGM. A similar line had been allowed down to Duck and Apex. Tom Siley also directed by Tex just before launching into his own take on Mary Go Brown Broke Down, which was become Looney Tunes' signature theme. Daffy told the audience, hold on to your, hold on your seats, folks. Here we go again. And that's a, that's a, that's how what the ending should have been, because what happened is the, the, the original ending was deleted uh, for, no, for no apparent reason. But that was a, kind of a, a dumb way to end this cartoon with it. So there you go. Um, just to give you a little bit of a demonstration here for a for a Bell and Howell Filmo Sound Specialist Model 552. Yep, the sound quality looks good. These looks pretty good, but the amplifier looks good. It runs on five tubes, but it runs on a very lengthy stale because this cartoon looks good. Um, and this is one of the films that I got, and I do not have any cans. I'll, I'll have to plan on see if I could get film cans. I have an extra can in there, so um, I got this many years, a long time. I had this for a long, long time. Yep, I'm using that for my reels because the reason why I got it, because I hadn't had this, I had it for years stored in my reel to reel. I got it since 1997. My dad gave it to me along with the 16 millimeter projector that I used to have. It was a Kodoscope 8. Well, the Kodoscope 16 projector, which I think when I first bought it since uh, probably the 90s. And of course, it's not working anymore. So I got these two reels gift. And um, very nice, but I'm glad uh, if I, I have to keep those as well. Handy. All you gotta do is uh, Take the reels in, put it in here, and uh, put it back in this case, and there you go. That is it. I'll have to see if I can label it as the heckling hair on there, so um, I'm just going to put this in here for, for no reason, but I'm going to type it in and put it on another video or something. So um, before, we, before, we go any before we go any further than this, Tell us what you think about this projector. Well, what are my thoughts? Well, this projector looks very nice. Of course, when I first got this about two weeks ago, when I first demonstrated this video, I tried to fail, fix I'm, I, a little bit of an update here. I always, I, I started to continue to fix this. Uh, it took me about a week or two to fix this projector. What happened? It took me a long time to do clean out. I sprayed with WD-40, and that does the job. But it's kind of sticky. But you can see it, it gummed up. But yeah, it doesn't even go down here. So what I'm doing is just, uh, just sort of, as of right now, the problem with auto loading is just feeding the film. That would be the problem. So I had decided to do it manually myself, just to throw in the film. But if the film gets jammed or gets uh, jittered, you have to stop the projector. You fix it. You have to reloop the holes. A little further than that, just to. Uh, just to get back into the movie, but this is what the, the bigger problem is. It took me forever. It took me about like two minutes to, to thread. So the thread, the time for limit for this was like two minutes, probably about a minute or two, up to two minutes. But yeah, it's kind of a pain to load or threading the film. But this got to be one of the, the, the just sort of a pain to do it. So, anyways, I'm going to tell you all about Bell and Howell. Um, this company was actually founded in 1920 in the 1900s, and this was one of the first companies to produce movie projectors. And this was actually one of the first companies that have um, to manufacture projectors. And this was recommended, and this like this one, Bell and Howell was actually did did well with these movie projectors. And then by the along around that time, Kodak was uh, was getting into movie projectors at the time. Since I have a a Kodak Super Showtime 8 movie projector, as you can see here. See, you can see Kodak names on here. This was kind of like a successor to Bell and Howell. Yeah, they tried to put Kodak manufactured movie projectors around that time. 
as a, as a successor to Bell and Howell, which uh, they also made the best finance projectors. Yeah, they kept going strong until probably the 40s, 50s, and right up until right to the end of its run of these movie projectors. But as for the, the projector itself, the specialist was kind of like it was recommended for schools, classrooms, elementary schools. Yeah, you could find any projector in elementary schools or anything like this during that time in the 60s and 70s. The projector is like the specialist was recommended for possibly for elementary schools was used. And uh, this is kind of like a more unit. And this, this projector looks pretty unique in the sound quality. The amplifier kicks butt. And yeah, it runs on its original tube. The original capacitor looks pretty nice. No other problems, no other issues with it. Yeah, the sound looks pretty interesting. It's pretty nice. But um, yeah, it's a very, very well-built projector. And uh, that was a very nice looking movie projector in, in itself. But it looks a nice way to, to cap off these movie projectors. It was one of the best things I ever watched. But the Exciter lamp, it looks very nice. It runs to a soundtrack. Like you see here, the soundtrack is right over here, but you have to compare which thing I can tell you. Um, this, is, uh, this is how you compare the soundtrack to it. And here's, uh, here's what it looks like. You can see what's on the reel. There's actually two forms of the film. If you look, look carefully onto the... Um, I just want to tell you how it focuses. This got the sprocket hole, looks exactly it's on the left side. And then the soundtrack, it goes right into the right side of the soundtrack. There's the soundtrack onto the right. And that's that's a very interesting flow. Yep, it's got the sprocket hole on the left, and the soundtrack is on the right. It indicates a signal onto the exciter lamp. That's where it indicates the, the, the film soundtrack came from. And of course, there's Mary's Little Lamb. I'm going to leave you with. Uh, this projector looks interesting, very good. And it has right here, you can see there's like, if you compare the other two, there's two sprocket holes. These are perf performation. That's like, a, yeah, and there's not even recommend to put on, on a lamp because the reason why, what the problem is when I did before, the, the sound was kind of, sound like farting. Yeah, it's like the projector was starting to fart. Well, you can hear that weird effect, like the And I was like, uh, it's kind of like uh, you hear sounds of the That is just so kind of stu awkward. Yeah, it is kind of awkward to me, but, but this is like kind of a, a weird way to do, to manufacture those projectors. It looks a little stupid. They put those little projectors on the sound amplifier on the projector. All right. There you go. That was the um, my my thoughts on the specialist projector by Bell and Howell, model 552. Well, it took me two weeks to, to make the video or something. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice projector. I hope one of these days I'll have to see if I can get more 60 millimeter movies to add to my collection. I'm going to start build up my own collection of these, and um, one day I hope uh, I hope you learned your lesson. So. Um, before we sign off, I'm going to give you a little bit of Mary's Little Lamb. And now before we sign off this uh, end this video, I'm going to present uh, a few moments with Mary's Little Lamb. The quality looks kind of nice done. Got a little sharp focus. Wow, I cannot believe, oh yeah, look what they did, now they, uh, same thing, yeah, sound, yeah, this does not use that sound, but this is a silent cartoon, but, oh yeah, it looks pretty interesting to watch, but look at this. Oh yeah, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> I think I like the originals are way better than this. Oh my gosh, now she uh, showing a lamp her underwear. Wow, that was kind of disturbing. And look what he did. 
Oh my gosh, now he has her underwear on her butt. <laughs> That's kind of nice. Well, yeah, this cartoon looks like it's in black and white, originally in color. But uh, you get the idea. So, there you go. That was the, um, the Bell and Howell Specialist 552 from the early, late 50s, early 60s. I, I have to say about it. So I hope you all enjoy this uh, long-awaited video. So um, I'm going to... Uh, thanks for watching. And this is Chris. And I will be talking to you next time. Take care, and I'm going to see you again real soon. And I'll take care of you. I'll see you later.